Madam Chair, thank you to each of the witnesses for being here. I think this is an issue that impacts a great many families. Uh, whether you go to sporting games, I go to a lot of, uh, lot, lot, lot of sporting activities, or whether you go to concerts, or whether you go to plays, families enjoy going out, they enjoy entertainment. And going through the process of getting a ticket can sometimes be gratifying and a lot of times really frustrating. I start from the principle that free markets are good, that if you want to have goods and services delivered to consumers, that free and competitive markets are the most effective way to do so at the most price competitive levels. I also start from a principle that monopolies are bad, that monopolies historically have hurt consumers, driven up costs, reduced options, and made the consumer experience markedly worse. I also would make an observation that in the big tech sphere in particular, we've seen monopolies being willing to be particularly abusive. I want to start with a question uh, for the witnesses. And, and Mr. Gretzinger, I'm going to start with you and just ask, in your judgment, is Ticketmaster a monopoly? Unequivocally. Mr. Mickelson? Yes, sir, without a doubt. Mr. Nuzzo? Yes, absolutely. Ms. Bradish? It's certainly acting like a monopoly. <laughs> Mr. Lawrence? I'm not sure. OK. So uh, Mr. Berktold, do you agree with the other witnesses on this panel? Uh, we absolutely believe the ticketing business has never been more competitive. We believe that fact is demonstrated by every venue renewal that has multiple credible offers in a bidding process. So are they just making it up? Why, why does everyone else perceive you as a monopoly? What, where's that coming from? I, I can't speak to all of their motivations on, on their points of view, but I think that if you simply look at what is the market power exercised by venues, which is perhaps not fully understood in our business. How about on the ticketing side? What percent of the market do you all have? I would estimate, depending on how you want to count what's in the market, between 50 and 60%. 50 and 60, and depending on how you count it, does anyone have a markedly different measure of that? Yes, sir, the okay. senator. Uh, um, they, 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 they have 87% of the ticketing contracts at the NBA and the NHL arenas. They have 93% of the ticketing co uh, contracts at the NFL stadiums. Those are the most important venues. You cannot include, if, you, you can, if he's including, he's including, uh, you know, it's, yes, I'll and, stop and, there. And, and can I fairly blame Mr. Berkthold for the Texans having such a lousy season and the Rockets having such a lousy seasons and the Cowboys just <laughs> losing? I mean, it's been, but the Astros did win the World Series, so I, I have something to cheer about. But... Um, I guess I can't blame you for that, but I, but I recognize the frustration. Let me ask you, Ticketmaster's dominant position in the marketplace, how does it hurt consumers? Mr. Kretzinger? Most fundamentally by eliminating competition. There's not a vibrant group of dozens of companies out there competing to build the best consumer experience. And what does that mean if you want to go go see a game. What does that mean for a consumer? How is life worse because there's not a more effective competition in the marketplace? It means you're beholden to whatever Ticketmaster Live Nation gives you, and they have an incentive to not innovate and to maintain the status quo because the status quo benefits them versus having a vibrant group of competition that's working to do what's best for consumers, artists, venues, all of the stakeholders in this industry. Mr. Mickelson? Yeah. It's a bigger question than just Ticketmaster, because when you combine Live Nation with right. Ticketmaster, it's the different question. Okay. All right, well, uh, answer it that way then, the, okay. the two together. Yes. Oh, um, look, they, the combination of the two um, provides them with a different business model than the rest of us independent promoters. We have to make money at putting on concerts. They don't, because they make more money from ticketing and from sponsorship than they do from concerts. And concerts is basically a lost leader for them to bring more talent and bring more content to the arenas that they're servicing to get the ticketing contracts. So your testimony is they're essentially undercutting the competition in the live performance market and subsidizing it using the ticket revenue. 
Is that, uh, that ticket right? revenue and sponsorship revenue, yes. Okay. Mr. Nuzzo? And, and here's how it looks to the consumer. A friend of mine sent me a screenshot of a uh, ticket purchase she made for, I believe it was a Shania Twain concert uh, in Orlando, and the tickets were $227 each, but when she got to the final screen where she had to actually uh, hit the button to make the order, they turned into $291 a piece. That works out to a 30% bump on the very last screen of the transaction. She had no choice at that point but to accept that bump in price. That's how it looks to a consumer. Ms. Bradish? Well, I think Sal brings up a great point with choice. It reduces the choice, not just of consumers who have to pay higher ticket fees, but also of artists like Mr. Lawrence. They don't have a choice of what venues to go to, what ticketing uh, uh, businesses that they will be dealing with. And, for others all up and down the supply chain and live entertainment. These kind of behaviors reduce choice. And Mr. Lawrence, finally for artists, what's the impact? The impact is that we have very little say or transparency or choice in a lot of aspects of how the financials of our deals are put together and no say or choice or visibility in what our fans experience when buying our tickets. And if the chair will give me the indulgence of one very quick final question. Sure. Uh, which is one of the things that's come up has been all in ticketing, both for consumers and or transparency for artists. Do any of the witnesses disagree with the proposition that that would be a good idea and a material improvement from where we are today? No disagreement from, uh, from, from, from JAM as an independent promoter, none. Okay, well, some area of agreement, that's, that's all, always a good thing.